Hello everybody, my name is Zach Schiller and welcome back to the channel. Today, I realized going through my catalogs of multiple video ideas that I have explained like why I chose gear specifically, but I never really gave you guys a guide on how to buy camera gear, whether it's for video or for photo. And I feel like that's more useful information for you guys than why I updated my gear, because everybody does that and you can drool over everybody else's gear if you want, but you need the best gear that fits you. And so I'm gonna give you a list of what I go through when I buy my gear and ideas of how you should look for it for professional growth in the future and how you're going to be able to afford something on a budget in the immediate right now. So one thing I worry about as an uh, editor at heart and a video shooter by day is color science. Now, if you're shooting a Canon, a Sony, or a Nikon, all of those color sciences, especially in a raw workflow, are gonna be something that is super manipulable and you won't break your image trying to get natural colors out of them. Canon has the best skin tones in my opinion, but Sony is this close. I've been shooting on the a7 III and I haven't had any trouble um, or come close to breaking an image, making the skin tones match what I think I look like. And honestly, I shoot on a Sony now, I shot on a Conan, Canon previous, and it hasn't been that much of a difference. Uh, Nikon is really, really good for photos. They've got a little bit of work to do on the video side but they're all very reliable options. Now, if you're going Panasonic, like Lumix, or you're going Leica, or you're going Fujifilm, um, you've got definitely aesthetic color profiles within them that have that kind of film-esque look. So you can use those if you want, but out of the camera standard profile, they're not gonna be to the top tier like Canon, Sony, and Nikon. So I would stick there if you care about color science, but if you're just kind of doing the camera that's best for you, I would definitely go with whatever one. Color science to this point on standard profiles is pretty close in every regard. And notice how we're not talking about like the actual camera body itself or like a specific brand or anything like that. The next thing that we're gonna be talking about is lens mount. What diverse options of lenses are you going to have to be able to shoot with? I mean, you have to think, both photo and video, do you have a diverse set of lenses to pick from, like offerings to pick from? For me, it's um, having a low budget, medium budget, and a premium product that not only the lens mount itself offers, but the brand that you buy, that you go to buy them, whether it's Canon, Sony, Leica, whatever, offers you. So Canon offers a fantastic budget-friendly beginner, and they offer a budget-friendly intermediate, or excuse me, an intermediate, and then they offer their L-series lenses or premium cine lenses as like once you're into professional work all the time kind of thing. And then you have all those third parties. You've got Tamron, you've got Sigma, you've got Yingyo, you've got um, a bunch of other options in the third party realm. Sony is also really, really good. They've been really, really good for a long time. Now Canon is starting to catch up, but you've got Sigma, you've got Tamron, you've got Rokinon, you've got uh, Sony lenses themselves and they're small, medium, and super expensive um, in the budget range as well. Uh, Nikon, I would say, uh, is a little bit struggling on the premium end, but they've definitely got the low and the budget options um, for you in the lens mount. And then I would stray away from Fujifilm, Panasonic, and Leica right now, just because they're all in the L series, or the L mount alliance, or whatever that thing is called, but they still don't have enough offerings to make it justifiable in my mind to go with their lens mount at the moment. Um, but Sony, Canon, and Nikon offer great options. Like I said, Nikon doesn't really have a premium-ish right now, but they're working on it. They've got a roadmap to get all their premium lenses out for their mirrorless cameras. So I think that's one thing that you have to consider when buying the body of your camera, whatever brand you decide to go with, what lenses are you going to be able to start with, upgrade to, and then become a professional with? So I think you have to determine what you're going to be doing with your camera, whether you're gonna be just a straight up video shooter, or you're gonna be just a straight up photographer, or if you're gonna want a hybrid of the both. The reason that I got the a7 III is because I needed a hybrid camera, and the, uh, the a7 line is really, really good at being hybrid, specifically like the a7 flats, not the a7Rs or a7Ss. Those are designated as photo and video respectively. So the a7 series, in my opinion, is really, really good from a full frame standpoint on uh, getting both a hybrid photo and a hybrid video shooter, but you have to determine what you want. I started with the C100 because I was a filmmaker Major. I needed to make films, I needed to have a professional video workflow, and as I adopted more photo photography into my professional workflow, I needed to get something that could do both, and that's why I ended up with the SL3 and then eventually the A7 III. So 
it really determines what you want in your camera and defining those specs when you are searching for the best photography camera, the best video camera, or the best hybrid. In my opinion, the way to look for those things is photography features, you definitely wanna have really, really good autofocus. You wanna have uh, face detection, you wanna have eye autofocus if they offer it. You wanna have a high megapixel count so you can blow it up however big you want. Honestly, you can blow up most uh, pictures with a low megapixel count, but the more megapixels, the better. Low light performance is super important. And if you're looking at the video specs, you wanna look at the bit rates that you're gonna be recording and you wanna look at the um, color space, the 422s and the 420s and the 400s. You wanna look at that, you wanna look at 8-bit and 10-bit, you wanna look at the recording modes, if it's got 24 frames a second or if it doesn't, if it offers 4K or if it doesn't, if there's a crop mode in those video set, uh, features. Those are things you have to worry about. In my opinion, I'm recommending the Sonys to pretty much everybody because this camera is phenomenal, um, but Canon has the same thing in the M50s and um, the A, or excuse me, the R and the RP and all those different offerings. So there are a bunch of camera manufacturers are doing great hybrid cameras. I prefer the Sonys at the moment, but you guys can really get whatever is budget friendly for you. So check them out and see exactly what kind of shooter you're going to be. Another little debate within that is whether you're shooting APS-C or full frame, that's up to you. There are lenses that are dedicated to APS-C to give it a full frame look or use the full width of the sensor. Uh, if you're looking for an upgrade path, if you can start full frame, start full frame, but I would start APS-C, especially if you're gonna be doing like vlogs and stuff like that. APS-C, the crop factor, as long as you get a wide APS-C style lens, you'll be fine. Um, but if you're doing like wanting to get into high level and professional photography, you wanna eventually make this a career, try and get full frame if you can. I'm gonna be making a video in the future discussing APS-C and full frame in depth more. So just wait for that video if you're determining whether you wanna buy APS-C or full frame. The final part of this video is super, super important to me. And that's my personal opinion of 75% of your budget should be spent on the other equipment that will help your camera get the best image. The lights, the tripod, the audio, the batteries, Everything that is around your camera as you're performing whatever professional task you're performing, whether it be photo or video, it's super important that this other equipment is high quality as well. So if you step down your body from full frame to APS-C, but you get a really good lens, you get really good audio and lighting and tripods, because tripods, for me, if you don't have a tripod that you would be willing to carry into the middle of the forest and lug it like on your shoulder, you can't, don't get it. Get a lightweight, really strong tripod. Anyway, all of my stuff aside, make sure that you get other gear that's hyper quality too. Otherwise, you're just going to be holding a really, really nice camera with a really garbage lens and some garbage lights. If you spend all your money on the camera, you're not going to be producing the best possible image that you could be making because if you can't control other aspects like light, audio, and stability, you're not gonna get the best possible shot in most scenarios. So those are the things that I would look at when buying a camera. If you guys have any other questions, go ahead and leave a comment down below or join our Discord community and ask all those questions there. I'm pretty responsive when it comes to you guys commenting, so please leave those informations down there and I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you like the video, like it, and if you wanna see more stuff that I'm creating, like that full frame versus APS-C video that I talked about earlier, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when I post another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye.